Welcome to Kingdom Talks. I've got Eric Skeldon with me, and we're going to be talking about some things that he's doing in uh, motion pictures and NFTs, and we're going to get started right after this. Welcome to Kingdom Talks, where we are exploring new dimensions of the Kingdom Restoration Age. Why are tens of millions of Christians seeking God beyond the traditional church? Is the church age over? Is the Father really in the process of restoring all things, as Peter said? If so, what does this look like? What's next on our Father's agenda? What amazing and revolutionary things does our Heavenly Father have for us right now on earth? Does God truly love everyone? Can we truly be one with Jesus and the Father as Jesus prayed for us to be? Maturing sons and daughters of God all over the world are waking up to their true power and potential in Christ. Are you one of them? What did Jesus mean when he said that his followers would do even greater works than he did? What are these greater works? What would true kingdom culture look like on earth? Kingdom business? Kingdom government? Kingdom education? Join in the conversation with your host Gil Hodges as we explore these amazing mysteries of the kingdom and their applications for kingdom communities all around the world. All right, so if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit your like button, share button, get the word out. Now, this is a recorded session, so we won't be able to take your questions live, but you can certainly put them in the comments for on Facebook and YouTube, and we'll try to get back around to those. But uh, we so appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in. Again, hit the like button, share button, and we're going to get started in just a minute. But before we get going, we are still looking to get another 15 people into uh, the child sponsorship with Uganda and uh, just really appreciate anybody who's willing to step up to that. KingdomEquippingCenter.com is where you would go to uh, jump in on that. KingdomEquippingCenter.com and you just scroll down the page a little bit to the Africa section and there you'll find where you can become a sponsor. That sponsorship is going to give that child one meal every day during school, you know, the school season. It's also going to give them medical attention, the education, obviously. And if need be, it will give them a place to stay. So $50 a month literally changes these children's lives. Um, and it's made such an impact. Uh, these, uh, This church over there with uh, Pastor Isaac Tindo uh, has done a wonderful job of uh, transforming this community. And they did an honoring service for us because Kingdom Equipping Center and Adina and I have done so much in the work over there that we have, um, uh, I guess, earned their respect and we've helped them build the school. So, again, we're just looking to get 15 more because when they have 15 more sponsors, it will actually enable them to be self-sufficient and they won't be reliant on outside help for, uh, you know, their 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 teachers and so on that they're hiring. So anyway, they've done a fantastic job. And so I really, really encourage you to do that. If you can become a sponsor and then uh, so, also, Gil, just, we want to step up yeah. for two of those kingdom warriors. We want to uh, sponsor two of those, of those 15 and yeah, I love what you guys are doing. Uh, well, thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. That's, that's very encouraging. And uh, I'm uh, just bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um. All right. And then um, uh, let's just go ahead and get started here. Uh, Eric, you know, <laughs> thank you for doing that. That's just awesome. Appreciate that very much. Uh, why don't you share a little bit about where you've come from, how you got to where you're at? Because uh, I'm I'm sure a lot of people on you on Facebook have already kind of um, met you. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of, uh, you know, friends that we each carry, uh, uh, you know, the same people on our Facebook groups. So uh, a lot of people do know you. But for those who don't, go ahead and share a little bit about your background, who you are and what you're doing. Yeah, thanks for having me, Gil. Uh, shout out to all the Kingdom Talks out there. Um, man, yeah, it's been an amazing journey with God. Um, he's he's just amazing. Um, you know, I'm a, a husband, uh, amazing wife, Felisa Jewel Skeldon, have five daughters, you know, you know, I was telling Gil right before this, um, 
you know, growing up, you know, the first drugs I ever tried was just being drugged in the church. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, every youth group, every all the time. I used to be the kid that was just, uh, you know, walking around the school, walking around like the churches and the, you know, they were at school sometimes. And I would like try to just explore because it was just kind of boring. I remember, you know, growing up and, you know, one of the things that really just, you know, I had a really strong faith and I used to pray for all like the burglars and the bad people. And, you know, like for all the, you know, I was like, I want all the, you know, the people who were really hurting in the world to know the love of God. And, you know, anyways, when I got a little bit older, I remember uh, one time we were at this youth group and, you know, the guy where they're talking about heaven and the guy at the youth group was like, that was leading it. You know, he wasn't actually a youth pastor or anything. Is just, you know, and like, I guess an adult that, you know, got to help with lead some of the youth groups. But, um, and anyways, he was, we're talking about heaven. He said, yeah, heaven, you know, the Bible, what Bible says about heaven is basically, you're just going to, you're going to sit around in a circle and you're just, you're not going to want to do anything else but worship. All you're going to do is worship 24 seven. And you're just like, you're just going to sit there and worship. And as a kid, I was the kid that was labeled ADD, ADHD, couldn't sit in my seat, always talking, always like, you know, just, you know, just like a rabbit, like jumping around, like just had so much energy. And, uh, you know, to me, I was like, that sounds like hell. Like that sounds like the worst <laughs> right. thing in the world is I'm just going to sit there and I have to worship and I have to sit still and I have to worship 24 seven. And, you know, during that time, I, you know, worship, nobody lifted their hands, nobody j- jumped, you know, we weren't in like a charismatic, it was like non-denominational big churches in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Anyways, that kind of, that really struck me. And I was like, man, that's, that doesn't sound fun at all. So, you know, growing up, you know, played basketball, ended up getting a cheerleading degree, or uh, I ended up getting a scholarship uh, to Weatherford College uh, near past Fort Worth and a cheerleading degree, uh, not, not cheerleading degree, sorry, uh, cheerleading, you know, paying for my degree and um, ended up just from eight, 18 to 21 was just like on my own learning, you know, about, you know, they were learning about the Big Bang and all the different stuff, geology and all the classes you take in regular, you know, getting your associates, you know, the stuff you have to take. It's not even the fun classes. Like I wanted to learn business and marketing and all these international studies. And I ended yeah. up in, you know, business degree in international management or international studies, nonprofit organization. I kind of knew I wanted to do charity work and stuff in the future and do business to impact, you know, the charity type stuff I was passionate about. But anyways, from 18 to 21, I really just tried everything under the sun. You know, I say like I went from LSD to GOD and, you know, had crazy experiences. You can actually see in the book, The Kingdom Mind, you can see some of my near like near crazy experiences. It's like seven dollars on Amazon. Uh, Dr. Brian Simmons, who's been a guest on Kingdom Talks, he he really encouraged me to, uh, you know, finish his book. and was like, yeah, I'm going to endorse your book. We'll get it. You know, go do it. And he was at on the Apostolic Oversight team at the church in Wichita, Kansas. Anyways, going back, I watched a documentary that changed my life. It was called Father of Lights. And it talked about Heidi Baker, Todd White, Will Hart, these people that were, you know, doing the things of the gospel that Jesus talked about overseas, all over in Africa and Thailand, you know, dealing with helping people that were dealing with transgender, understand their identity. And I was like, that's the stuff I want to do. That documentary film changed my life. And um, I ended up asking God for, you know, a wife. I was about to leave that summer for basic training after I, you know, tried everything and just, you know, really, God really kind of met me and just helped me be like, okay, I am real. You know, I, you know, I started really hearing his voice a lot more clearly and listened to the Texas Army National Guard and ended up going, um, yeah, going to Texas Army National Guard, met my wife. We, pr- you know, I proposed to her in seven days. God said she was going to be the one. It was all super prophetic. My wow. life started becoming really prophetic since 2013 and my wife was already kind of after i saw that documentary my wife was already going to like more prophetic churches and these mexican churches where people's legs were going back and you know the hispanic churches were like just you know seeing a lot of more miracles than the mega churches i was used to where it was a lot of production value but it just and a lot of money in the church but there just wasn't any power and anointing and um anyways i um you know, we got married. We wrote letters for three months while I was at Fort Benning, Georgia, um, an infantry school. And then we got married outside of the first break I had before I went to airborne school. And um, we now have five daughters. We'll be 10 years married this September. Wow. Um, you know, I ended up going to getting a business degree over the next few years and really just like we wanted to do world missions in Africa. 
which is why I love what you're doing in Uganda. And, you know, we re- finally have been able to sew back into Africa and like, um, you know, I'm actually going to Israel for the first time now with Dr. Brian Simmons this October. Super wow. Wow. That. God has just been on this miraculous journey and really helping us understand that, you know, I knew I wanted to give back and help missions and stuff, but I didn't. And I knew I wanted to get into film, but I didn't know that God would, you know, have me learn that it's not like instead of me only, um, you know, because my older brother ran a nonprofit, pretty successful nonprofit for, you know, seven years. And I kind of like knew that at one time I was like thinking I just wanted to do that to a nonprofit and do that kind of stuff. But then God showed me that I would have more able to give more money if I just created a product or service and a business that grew and scaled. And that's kind of where I found out I was anointed for. And I found out people like Dr. Ed Savoso, who wrote Anointed for mm-hmm. Business and Ecclesia. Then I started founding people like Dr. Miles Monroe, who an amazing book, Rediscovering the Kingdom. And, you know, these other books that he wrote, one of the greatest teachers on, you know, just the kingdom versus like, he was a Bahamian guy. And anyways, just that kind of stuff really revolutionized my mindset. And so I'm just glad that now it's like I can, you can be a business person and still be a marketplace minister. Yeah, it's, it's a big part of my heart now. You know, it's funny because a lot of people don't know. I mean, if they've been around long enough, they've heard, you know, because I spent 17 years in business and and myself, I, I kind of like you in some ways. I was a, a serial entrepreneur because I created 15 businesses and five corporations <laughs> in that 17 years. And um, at the same time, created a ministry in Sacramento, uh, California, called the um, Christian Business Intersection. And I'd gone around and gathered all the Christian business ministry leaders to have them come together so we could start working together because not one of them knew more than one or two of the others. And, you know, they were always doing meetings over the top of one another. And I'm like, why don't we kind of coordinate some of this and come to a place where we work together instead of kind of opposing one another? So we did That's that. Yeah, That's where my business partner is. He's in Sacramento. He has like a photography studio out there. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Andrew Snow. So he's a younger guy, like 28. Um, I know the name. Yeah, Andrew we were Snow. really well connected in, in Sacramento. But um, yeah, anyway, that was it was an interesting season, a, a fun season. And um, we had Ed, Ed Silvozo come and, and so forth. And um, it was it was a good it was really good. But so I love what you're doing. And, uh, you know, there are I'm totally a believer in everybody has their calling for the body. And it's not like, um, you know, a lot of people think you have to be a pastor or an evangelist in order to be in in ministry and doing something for God. But it's like, no, that would be a total disaster if everybody was a minister and evangelist. (laughs) You know, we need the people like you and, and every other part of the body doing what they do and just doing it well. And everybody else learning to honor one another in what each person has uh, been gifted for or given a desire to do. So appreciate that very much. And and it's people like you that can step up and step step in real quickly, like you did, just to sponsor a couple of the children, which is a beautiful thing. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's really cool that you have that history and you brought El Savoso in there and Sacramento. Yeah, interesting. I want to go. I haven't been and got to hang out with uh, my partner, but it was it was even. Yeah, like when we first had this idea for Kingdom Warriors um, and he his mom passed away in Sacramento, my business partner, and he um, had had this inheritance and he was asking God for things to, um, you know, to sow into that. We're going to multiply the kingdom and and and, you know, out of during that time. You know, he invested in a lot of different things with crypto and other things. And he's like the Kingdom Warriors, what he, he invested in Kingdom Warriors when we first had this idea. And then we were able to hire a team from like Sony, Disney and Marvel to help us with the creation of this brand and the intellectual property and the movement. And um, yeah, so it was a seed from Sacramento and faith, wow. like from, yeah, just people who just take action, you know. So that's why I'm I'm all about action. Like if I know I can help someone, if I know I can be a part of, hey, helping some kids in Africa be sustained is like you know yeah. and i think the body of christ we need to learn about just imperfect action and just stepping in the gap too many times we're too passive i think yeah well and and uh, you know africa has become a big part of our ministry in that we went there to help them but in the process you know the, yes there's some poverty stricken areas obviously but there's also some very brilliant and talented people there 
And so they do most of my editing. They do most of my video oh, wow. editing. And, uh, you know, I'm able to pay them and support quite a few people. In fact, uh, you know, we've been supporting the school there for a year and a half. And it's been it's been challenging lately because of finances. But it's been a, a beautiful, uh, you know, combination where, you know, a little bit of money there goes a long way. And mm -hmm. it's been helping. I think we've been employing between eight and 11 people over there, wow. which, you know, what we were giving wouldn't even employ one person here. <laughs> so, yeah. If you have more, if you, if they need, if they have more and they need more help, we have, we need that kind of help and we can, yeah, bless people who give video editing too. So. Well, I will, we'll, we'll definitely talk about that afterwards. So tell everybody what it is that you're really focused on right now. What's father got you doing yeah. and what is, what's the word you want to get out to everybody? Yeah, right now we're really focused on film and media. God is taking over the film and media realm. He's raising up kingdom creatives and innovators to innovate, not just in media, but in every industry, but specifically for us and our movement. Uh, we're raising up creatives and innovators to to create, to start speaking, to use their voice, to write and s share stories, to bring heaven to uh, earth through films, through documentaries, through powerful storytelling with excellence, with good production, good character development. Um, if you look at what's happening with, you know, Jesus Revolution just did $50 million with Lionsgate. Uh, the Amazon and Netflix of the world are now pouring money, you know, 20% of their money or in, of, into faith and impact film and media. They're understanding the power of Christians. We have the money, we have the people, we have the votes. And, and they're understanding, and as we are understanding our authority and we're understanding our rights and what what we have access to, what we have, not even in the supernatural realm, like the authority we have, but just even in the physical realm of with how much money we and market value we possess in media and entertainment, we have we have a huge, huge, um, you know, competitive advantage when we understand the power of our what we have in our hands. You know, God asked Moses, what do you have in your hands? And we, um, you know, partner with um, a production company with a story. God gave us this world of Eladria. It started with Kingdom Warriors, this NFT project. We hired, raised fifty thousand dollars in November of 2021. Hired a team from Sony, Disney, and Marvel, and said we're going to build build our own Marvel. We're going to build our own Marvel universe, our own Kingdom Disney. And we ended up, you know, launching Kingdom Warriors, and now Kingdom Warriors Studios, um, which now has three different films uh, on our belt, but that we're working on, but the first TV series that we're having a premiere here in Franklin, Tennessee, look up legends of Eladria or Eric Skelton online. If you want to come and you're in the Nashville area, actually this may be coming afterwards. So you'll probably have to watch the E stream, which we'll probably have the E stream coming out in a month. But anyways, legends of Eladria, you can look us up on Facebook, uh, just the film page, but it's basically this world of good and evil. And, and a lot of parallels to what's happened in the USA, what's happening from, you know, whether it's Lucifer in heaven during the Bible, like 33% of the angels, you know, coming coming down and just the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of darkness. What I love about it, it's like this orphan to king story where through the idea was we we're going to have this big trilogy. Think about the Matrix. Think about, you know, Frodo Baggins and Lord of the Rings. And God created our own like version of, you know, just one my story of even going to the military, becoming an army paratrooper, getting a business degree all the orphan spirit I lack, all the lack and limiting beliefs I had. You know, I was afraid of public speaking. I went after that fear in 2019 when I got a word from Chris Vallotton in Vacaville, California. And I ended up, um, you know, just going after the things you're afraid of. The things that the enemy is attacking you at the most are the things that many times you need to go after, which for me and half the body of Christ are paralyzed with fear of public speaking. Therefore, we're not even, you know, proclaiming the message. We're not even sharing our stories we're not sharing you know the things god has in our hearts because we're literally in fear so my message is to release the fear from people holding people back from being a warrior letting the warrior within come out let the kingdom inside come out of their voice and then so that's kind of where people are getting breakthrough in our community and for us we're just uh really excited about film and media and storytelling like if you look at lord of the rings how many people that impact is showing the spiritual realm showing the supernatural showing demonic versus you know angels and you know god's you know god's heroes and his avengers which are like us and you look at these superhero movies and the holy spirit speaks so 
even the secular ones, you know, Holy Spirit speaks to me and my wife so much when we watch these films, whether it's the Matrix yeah. and you got <clears throat> Neo and you got the one and, you know, Yeshua was the best, you know, storyteller of all time. You know, all he was able to raise up 12 and through parables of the kingdom, parables of the sower, parable of the field that you would sell everything for, for the field and talking about the kingdom all the time. You know, those stories were able to transform the apostles, transform, you know, now having 2 billion people at least believing in, you know, that Jesus is, you know, Lord or, you know, some form of Christianity, um, you know, and it's all through powerful storytelling. It's not about just, you know, hey, you're a sinner. You need to just be saved. It's like through stories that relate to people, whether it's the woman on the well, whether it's, hey, you had five divorces, but God still loves you. He still knows you. And those are the stories that carry on, you know, the test of time and still impact people today. Yeah, it's so good. So good. <clears throat> now, the, the what does the NFT part come in? Is that something people can get involved in or yeah. how does that work? So, yeah, Michael King, Dr. Brian Simmons. It's interesting. A lot of the prophetic people like the prophet James Gold is a holder. Like it's just really it's, you know, Gil, we got to get you some NFTs so you can become a holder. But basically, here's some of the NFTs right here. So. We basically we had a Sony designer that sold over a million dollars of art, uh, create these NFTs. Now we're creating coloring books, children's coloring books. We're creating basically it's intellectual property. So all NFTs are are keys. So you can write that in the YouTube comments. NFTs are keys. They're basically intellectual property uh, that's on the blockchain. And, you know, YouTube, go on YouTube, type in what is the blockchain? What is Web3? And there's amazing visual videos that break it down visually and audio, audio, audioly so you can see it. Um, but basically, it's intellectual property that there's only 8,888 of them. You can see like one of the, these are some of them okay. above. So mm -hmm. people all over the world, like Dr. Brian Simmons or Gil or me, and, you know, there's basically 700 warriors around the world who own that. that and you can buy and sell them. You can, um, you can turn them, like, for instance, we share the intellectual property rights. As long as people do something good with them, they can, you know, put it on their front cover of the book or they can create their own story. So we're even inspiring people to take the characters that they buy and, you know, since they co-own them, you know, they can list them, they can sell them if the, you know, the market. So like right now they're trading for about a hundred dollars on the open market and they're on OpenSea.io, but they're sold out. So you can't get them from me. You would have to get them from the 700 holders online on OpenSea. OpenSea, you know, has billions of dollars of throughput for all the biggest NFT projects. One of my goals for the NFT project is to, not, you know, we're pretty much the largest Christian NFT project, but one of the goals for the NFT side of our business is to be in the top 100 or top even 10, but start with the top 100 global Christian NFT projects, meaning people have ownership in it. The cool thing about it is, so what Web3 is, Web1 is like information, right? It was this information loaded to the computer. Web2 is like reading and writing the information. Web2 is like, we log in StreamYard or you log in Twitter or Facebook. You have an email, you have a password. If Facebook owns your data, Facebook owns your stuff, but you have a login and you can read and write information. You could post something, you could write something. Web3 is ownership. So it's on the blockchain. There's ownership. So you know, hey, I only have uh, 100 of these NFTs and they're holographic. And, you know, Gil has number one and it's verified from the Kingdom Mind collection. There's only one of them. This person has number two. This person has number three. So like when Kingdom Talks, say you were able to launch a Kingdom Talks, say you worked with the designer, the like the most cool prophetic designer, you did a um, hundred, you know, angel or a hundred lion, you know, <laughs> cool uh, paintings. There would only be a hundred of them. It's the official Kingdom Talks collection. And on the blockchain, it basically shows this is the official collection. There's only 100 of them. And here's the art for each one. And it's basically just a cool way to bring art and bring community. And there's something called utility. So meaning the people who own that art, they can now get tickets to uh, backstage when we do behind the scenes. They can now get tickets to Gil's you know, annual event. You can do basically the utility. You can attach in the value of utility to the digital real estate. So the NFTs are the keys. So for, let me give you an ex a real practical example. Everyone who owns one of these NFTs, there's 8,888 8, 8, of them. Whoever owns these on the blockchain, that's a key for them to come to our annual Kingdom Warrior event. That's a key for them to come to our movie premiere. That's a key if they want to come in Nashville. 
that's a key for them to they unlock all of our um which we use web 2 and web 3 because web 3 you do it does cost a lot for the developers to upgrade and have it to where basically your nft is a is token gated meaning the nft is basically a cryptocurrency on the ethereum blockchain so bitcoin and ethereum are the two biggest uh cryptocurrencies that i i believe in and that are way more powerful than the dollar right as, as currently you know ethereum is 2000 2000 for one ethereum it's around $2000 uh cash usd and then for one bitcoin you would be able to cash out one bitcoin for about thirty thousand dollars give or take it moves every day but yeah. they're basically yeah. they're people are betting on bitcoin and ethereum just especially during what's happening with the banking and the fiat and the fact that since 2020 we've printed over 60 percent of the usa's circulation meaning that we've basically in the past three years we printed more money than like you can imagine like we're just inflating our dollars so much so people yeah. like things like bitcoin and ethereum because they're not they're not just over inflating. There's only a finite amount of them. And so it's, it's, that's, um, you know, this isn't a financial advice. These are just some, some facts and statistics about that industry. So I'm, I'm kind of curious, um, because, you know, we've had people that have kind of stepped up for kingdom talks and, and, um, uh, if someone wanted to step up for kingdom talks and do something in this arena, what would that look like? For web three and NFTs? Yeah. So basically, you you know you can create your own currency, cryptocurrency, really easily. So you can create your own cryptocurrency or NFTs really easily. The biggest thing about with any brand, as I tell them, is like setting up an NFT project is relatively easy. I mean, you need a developer, you need an artist, and then you need a community. So the biggest thing you need is you need to know how to do marketing and have a community. Because you know I see people launch NFT projects all the time, and they try to bring me on, on as a consultant. Eric, how did you guys raise money for Uganda and buy buy land in Uganda and, you know, fund a film and, you know, have this cool community? It's because we brought a lot of value. We brought the best speakers. We brought the best, like, designers, the best, um, you know, developers, the best designers, the best artists. Like, and that's what I teach people about, like, um, about being a visionary versus thinking you have to do everything. If you know the vision and you know what you want to build, hire really smart people to help you complete the vision. Yeah, have have the resources to have really good people to help you build out a, a vision. If you look at any big company, whether it's Twitter, you know, with Elon now and whatever, it's like you have thousands of people helping continue out that vision and, you know, highly skilled people to do that. So um, basically, yeah, you can create your own cryptocurrency. But the, where I really see an add value in the future over these next 10 years is really like what we see with fiat, you know, just alternative currencies. Ways here's here's an example for Africa, you know most, and even for me, a lot, you know when I grew up, I had different you know bank accounts that went overdraft, like so many thirty five dollar fees that I didn't pay them. So I got on the check system. They were like, oh, big banks were like, don't bank with Eric when I was you know in my early twenties so trying to figure out life, and you know anyway, so I was b barely able to get banked. Think about in Africa, there's over a billion people in Africa, you around the world that are unbanked. So with cryptocurrency. Yeah. Anyone who has Wi-Fi can say there was a kingdom talks or there was a kingdom token. Anyone who has Wi-Fi can have a kingdom token and you can you can do a crusade and put a QR code and you could trans anyone who has internet because people in, and I'm talking to a lot of people in Africa, they have a phone and they have internet sometimes. So they, they yeah. can actually, they're just not getting banked because the banking system doesn't bank them because they're not really bringing any money to that system or whatever. There's this, it's just, they're just not valuable, I guess, to the banking system currently so but the, the crypto system anyone with a, a phone and a and wi-fi or internet or not even even if they don't have internet you can still have a wallet and still have cryptocurrency yeah. that's the power of crypto and that's why it's more for we the people web3 is more about we the people it's about giving ownership back from the banks to we the people same with crypto that's why people like crypto um versus yeah okay so this is this is what i'm gonna do is um um I'm I'm thinking maybe Eric we could we could do another show in another few weeks uh, where you could come on and we we talk more about this and and how it can actually be done. Um, yeah, sure. and, and but here's the thing I'm going to ask everybody who's watching if you're watching and you're interested in this let me know because if we get some response back that you would be interested in learning more 
then uh, we'll we'll do something. Uh, we'll look at doing something again in a few weeks, uh, probably probably one to two months at least out there. <laughs> but um, want to do something that's going to benefit you, Eric, benefit what yeah. you're doing, as well as maybe we can benefit Uganda and Kingdom Talks. Um, do a win, win, win all the way around. I would love to 100%. do that. Yeah. yeah. And it's really cool just be, because, um, you know, I was even talking to Dr. Brian Simmons. We were talking to him about building a passion, a passion token to where we build an app for the passion translation and on the app, people who are reading the passion translation all over the world, mm -hmm. they can get paid in passion token and whatever that market is, they can actually get paid to study the word and study different, mm -hmm. different parts of the passion. So to hear, because when I started studying the passion versus some of the other, I yeah. wouldn't, I started declaring the passion translation out loud. It rewired my brain to see God's love letter for me. So I was able to receive yeah. his love a lot more and see it in a way of that. God really loves me and he really cares about me. Versus just like religious duty. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so good. So good. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to, um, um, we're going to shift here in a minute, but, uh, so we're going to take a break, but after the break, we're going to take a look at, um, a, a trailer, I guess that John Reese Davies, who is otherwise known as Gimli <laughs> on the Lord of the Rings. Uh, he's narrating that, uh, we're going to take a look at that. So that's going to be exciting. So make sure you hang out and come back for the, for the, um, trailer as well as taking a look at some of the other Christian movies that you're working on and going a little bit deeper into that. So a lot of that's really exciting. I, I think it's very cool and looking forward to seeing that. Um, so we're going to look at that after we, after the break. And the break is about the ultimate impact course that uh, my wife and I put out several years ago and between two and 3000 people have gone through it and it has literally set people free to get your mindset into the, the the next age of Christianity and get it out of the old box is so important right now. And it's been helping a lot of people. So uh, take a listen to this and it's about 45 seconds and then we'll be back and we're going to take a look at that trailer. All right, right after this. Hey there, thank you for joining Kingdom Talks. We are taking a short break to share with you the life-changing online course called Ultimate Impact. Gil and Adina do an amazing job taking the complicated and making it simple and applicable for your life. Ecclesia groups are using this course to shift their thinking into the next age paradigm. Yeshua spoke of power, authority, love, and oneness that we have yet to walk in. So if you're ready to deconstruct limiting beliefs in order to step into what Father is doing now, this course is for you. Sign up today at kingdomtalksmedia.com under the courses tab. Now, back to the show. All right, so we're back with Eric Skulden and uh, looking forward to taking a look at uh, this trailer. And I don't know if you want to say a little bit about it before we jump in. How do you want to do that? Yeah, so this is really exciting. So this is kind of what I was talking about. Like God cares about the little things. He cares about the desires of your heart. Um, you know, God knows that I was a huge Matrix fan. And he also knows that, um, you know, because Neo at the beginning, he was he was stuck in the system. You know, yeah. He was stuck in the Matrix. And then he broke out. He ended up by the end of it. He was able to fly. That's another thing in my dreams. I always ask God, God, can you help make it to where I know that I'm dreaming so I could just get up and fly like Superman? That was always like my and sometimes he lets me do it and I, you know, I'm able to do it. But anyways, in that. So he was able to understand his identity, his authority that he already had within him. And then he was able to start manifesting it, which is I love. And then so I guess a part of that. So a guy, one of the first guys, Dr. Mark um, Smith, who's one of our producers on this uh, film series, Legends of Aladria, he, he bought the first $2,000 Kingdom General package of our NFTs. And then later on, he connected me with uh, Hamid Torpor of Winter State, who is also a producer on a lot of Winter State's films. And they're out of Minnesota. And, Min and, and one of the films they did was under the stadium lights, it was the Abilene football, uh, Texas football movie with Lawrence Fishburne, who played Morpheus from the Matrix, which is like the two big ones is Keanu Reeves and Neo and Morpheus, Lawrence Fishburne. And so when I saw that, I was like, follow the rabbit trail. And I was like, you know, talked with them. They heard our story. And eventually they're like, yeah, like they, you know, and they're legit people to work with. Like they're, you know, they're, they're turning down a lot of projects of films and stuff to work with. And and uh, scripts to write because it when you write a script like this whole series it's a lot of work like it's a lot of thought it's a yeah. lot of energy and a lot of time months of time of writing it and then producing it we shot it in 20 days over there by uh, hamid's house and 
in uh, Minnesota, live action. We had horses, we had armor. So today you're going to see the John Reese davies narration. You're going to see some of the world. And then here in about a month, um, we're going to have an e-stream. So if you follow me on Facebook, Eric Skeldon and Legends of Eladria on the Facebook page, you'll get an update when that e-stream comes out. Um, so you can watch it. And then eventually it will be on one of the platforms, either Netflix, Amazon, or Hulu. So we'll see which platform ends up picking it up. Wow. Sounds cool. So are you ready to show it? Yep. Ready to go. All right. Let's let's see it. Mm-hmm. In ages past, the land of Eladria was prosperous and bountiful. It was a time of peace. Then one man's heart gave way to darkness and changed the course of Eladria, creating the world as now it is. After 100 years of war, Eladria was finally overcome by the Dark One. With only a few remaining servants of the Everlight who resist, Lord Driston has sent his fiercest warriors to exterminate those who would stand against him. Man, his voice is just so amazing. And okay, then the part where it was kind of just amazing. So I'm the other film, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien, Lord of the Rings writer, you know, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings. And, you know, I was, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. And so when we found out that we have a connection, or Hamid was able to give our script to the agent of John Reese Davies, who he's coming out in Indiana Jones 5 this summer. So, the production yeah. value of and the star value of John Reese Davies and the fact that Lord of the Rings, the new one came out and Amazon just spent a billion dollars on the new Lord of the Rings series. And, you know, John didn't actually like some of the new stuff Amazon's doing with it. And he's obviously the OG one that did over a billion dollars in revenue, that trilogy. And so he really likes our story and didn't even like what was happening with the new one. Plus wow. just in him complimenting our story was just really just like an honor from God. But then two, the, um, you know him doing it and he was able to do it um and just the fact that it just it just flowed everything just flowed and like and bringing him on the project was just really cool to narrate and then for season two he's actually going to act in it as well and so it's just really it's really cool to see what god's doing in film that is that is very cool so now you've you said you've got a couple of other big christian films coming out um what's happening with those yeah, so we have another uh, film project we just uh, picked up called Wealth with Purpose. And basically, have you heard of The Secret? Anyone yeah. ever watched The Secret? So The yeah. Secret is more like laws of attraction. And I would say some people just, you know, only call it just new age stuff. But basically, which there is like, there's not really giving credit to God. We're going to make the biblical version of The Secret. And we're going to interview David Green of Hobby Lobby, Dan Cathy of Chick-fil-A, and we basically, there's a, there's a book on, I got a co-author with someone in our Kingdom Warrior community called Wealth with Purpose. And then it was someone in our community who prophesied and they're like, you're going to turn that into a documentary. And I already had this idea for a documentary to interview the billionaires like David Green. David Green has funded over a hundred million dollars of the Bible Museum and other like ways to give back. And, um, you know, and as I'm getting in these circles and meeting some of the millionaires and billionaires in the Christian world, that are, you know, tr thinking about how do we work together? How do we put our money together for impact? And, you know, I want, I want people to hear, hear the stories of people who had a God idea or an invention or a patent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're able to take the idea and ask God to bless it. Like Solomon, you know, give me the wisdom to, to do something with this. And where it's able to create their business to be a blessing, to fund whatever they want to fund. And so we're going to do a biblical version of the secret from like, 
pretty much the laws of success from Proverbs to Solomon to all the different things in the Bible that help us build wealth. Because kingdom principles, when you put them in action, they work in every industry. I've, yeah. I've applied kingdom principles to real estate, to affiliate marketing, to digital marketing, to NFTs, to the blockchain, to crypto, to media. And it works in film. It works in every industry. It could become, if you ask, what is the kingdom, like, what is the, this industry doing? Okay, so like, say you want to be a YouTuber. Okay, what's the industry doing in YouTube? And you ask, okay, what's the kingdom solution to that industry? You know, what would what would, what would would heaven look like in that industry? And you start just solving problems in that industry, and then you're going to just start standing out. Yeah, I, I love that. And, um, you know, one of the things that uh, I've taught for a while, and I, want, I need to get back and do a course on it, but uh, just, you know, when we align with who Father says we are, so, you know, it takes it takes a little bit of time, but it's just that meditation time of being in a place where you can hear who what father is saying about you, who you really are, mm-hmm. that when we completely align. And this has been my own experience. When we completely align with that, then what happens is that law of attraction, you know, so it's alignment, attraction and then impact. And so once we oh, align right. and we know who we are, we don't have to fight and strive and struggle to accomplish what God put us here to do. We just need to align with who he says we are and get rid of the limiting beliefs. And then the attraction starts to happen and the attraction will bring to you the things that you need in order to accomplish what you're here to do. And that's when you have your impact. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. It's like it's such I mean, I told you, you know, I spent 15 years in business or 17 years in business and and all that. Um, But I drove everybody crazy around me. Because I was constantly just driving, pushing, driving, pushing, making things happen. Mm-hmm. And I could do it. But at the same time, it was pushing people away because I, you know, so much energy. It's funny right now because with our ministry, um, you know, we've had like 10 people, uh, you know, that are either volunteer or employed at one point or another. And literally, you know, when you take the um, personality test, literally everyone is a contemplator except for me. I'm more of the get out there and get it done. And it's like we joke that it took nine contemplators to equal my one, <laughs> my my drive and push it, everybody. You know? So That's I've awesome. had to learn to slow down. But part of that was coming into alignment with, you know, recognizing who God said I am. I don't have to prove myself to anybody. Mm-hmm. I just get to be. And when I when I'm learning to be, then the attraction of everything that's meant to happen comes. And I just need to trust that and trust his timing for things. Because there's still a lot of big things that Father has, uh, you know, has for me. I just have learned to wait and let those things come to me. Uh, Yeah, there's things I got to do. But at the same time, I don't have to go out there and bust heads to make things happen. (laughs) Yeah, that's so good. I was just hearing yeah, alignment for your assignment. And it really is true. Once you just align with who you are, with your, your divine scroll, God, you know, Jesus didn't have to do everything. He did what the father said to do. He went where he had to go. Right. It's like, how do we just stay in that alignment? And that's, um, that's so key. Yeah. That's so. That's key. what we teach is like, if we can get to the place where, and it's my heart is if I can get to the place where I'm only doing what I'm seeing the father doing, which again, takes time to actually meditate. And then eventually we get to a place where we're in a, in a place spiritually where, we're simply living in that realm of seeing what the father's doing. And, and for me, I'd rather do that because I know that he's going to accomplish a thousand times more than I can on my best day. And so I'd rather just be doing what he's doing from a place of rest and that will accomplish more. And I have, since I've slowed down and just been focusing on that, I've, I feel like I've accomplished so much more kingdom kingdom talks came out of that, came out of that just resting and not striving I never envisioned myself as a talk show host or anything of that nature. It it just it just happened and, and it just the everything fell into place that needed to fall into place for it to take off. It was beautiful. Yeah. So we've got about 15 more minutes. Um, what else would you like to share with everybody? And it just, you know, again, what's the word on your heart from Father that uh, you really want people to understand and, and engage with? Yeah, just I would say just um you know, really being able to tap into the creativity, your creative genius. You know, I was listening to a a training from uh, Bill Johnson and he said it was titled when in war create. And, you know, obviously you look around, uh, there's tons of, you know, with the banking crisis or there's always, you know, people, you know, shooting bombs at Israel or all the different things around the world happening uh, in America or Ukraine or Russia. There's, you know, constant, you know, 
craziness and news, you know, and not even just that's not even going to like the propaganda. There's like there's actual like real bad stuff happening. And then there's like crazy stuff on the news that are just trying to twist things. And then there's so much stuff going on. But it's like during crisis, there's just tons of opportunity right now. And, you know, global markets, you know, I do believe there's, you know, some things that can happen with global markets right now. But I think it's just a time for, uh, you know, out of rest, out of us learning to produce out of rest, to walk with our father, to simply stay in um, alignment for our assignment to, um, you know, to focus, focus on what God has. You know, what do we have in our hands? Take inventory. What do you have in your hands right now? Is it Wi-Fi? Is it a microphone? Is it your phone where you can start building a Facebook group or start going live or start uh, shooting videos on what you're passionate about? You know, like what do you have in your hands that you can use to multiply that you can give? And it doesn't have to be big. Then it could be something you, a lot of times what you already have, it's expertise you already have in your head. Um, And, you know, learning how to serve people with that, find, you know, who are you called to serve? Like, what are you called to do and find the problems of those, you know, people and see like, how can I use what I already have to start, you know, bringing some of my expertise, people need to hear your story, you know, your mess that you turn into your message, more warriors need to learn to, to master their, their, their message, master their message, turn their mess into the message. You know, we, we train people how to like really start sharing their story. There was, we had a, a warrior Wednesday where we do our coaching and there's a, there was a guy in there that, you know, he overcome meth addiction and cutting himself and all this wild stuff. And now he just wants to transform that what, because he's overcame that and got his kids back and all this stuff. And it just makes, it lights me up to hear that people that have overcome all these amazing things. And now they're seeing that they can actually help transform people and lend a hand back like Paul to Timothy to the people and how many people they can impact. They just face the fear of what they've overcome. They start seeing themselves in what God has for them for their destiny, whether they can overcame meth addiction or they overcame pornography or they overcame, whatever it is like, you know, orphan mindset. And you can start sharing stories of your message, start learning to, you know, craft your talk in 30 seconds and two minutes. And, and it really is so powerful. So that's the biggest thing I'm, it's been on my heart is like help. And a lot of times it's just, it's already in our hands. We already have it. It's already available to us. We just need to, you know, kind of learn to package it and craft it. And, um, the other thing is this, um, about the creative genius, you know, the public school system and just everything that I've been learning about just, um, you know, how, you know, I have five daughters. So I really just thinking about them as far as we're building this creative company and growing up, I got, you know, was told all stupid and different things. Cause I, I, I struggle with math. And so, you know, made B's and C's in school and, you know, it was, you know, I'm really passionate about transforming the education industry. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to do that with gaming and online education and just like, even gamify it through video games where we're looking into the video game industry to how do we bring like role playing games where you can learn kingdom principles and say even get paid in cryptocurrency or this rewards or whatever that can help people like stay engaged to the content or the media or the the lessons and then get gamify it and then make it fun so that's something we really really believe is going to be huge is um the the gaming industry but also just the online education or transformation that learning yeah and be able to focus more on what you're passionate about learning versus just you know yeah well and i think that's going to be a major change that we're going to see with this generation i mean i don't know how old your daughters are but our first grandbaby was born and you know just talking about it and thinking about it, it's like with everything that's coming and i'm not even going to say some of it because it freaks some people out but i'm 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 like it's coming so we need to be prepared for it as christians we shouldn't be bailing out of things just because we don't like it or don't understand it we you know we've done that too often and um you know we've abdicated leadership of very powerful things over to the dark side if you want to call it that <laughs> when in reality yeah. if we would stay with it and stay engaged then uh, we get to be part of it and we get to help uh, mold that in the direction of kingdom. So anyway, having said all that, uh, you know, my granddaughter is probably, I'm guessing, very likely to be educated online and and have, you know, a, a far superior education because, as you said, she'll be able to pick and choose the things that she really wants to learn while also picking up the things that you and I, you know, learned in 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 school, grade school, uh, a lot of that's going to come just because, you know, in order to do the other stuff, you got to learn to read, you got to learn to write, or at least type. A lot of that writing may 
may go to by the wayside. Who knows? <laughs> Got to understand it a little bit, I think. But uh, just a lot of things that we value, our generation values, my generation values, um, is you know likely to go by the wayside as new things are coming, and it's just we 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 have to adapt and and change with things. Otherwise, you know the the Amish aren't necessarily a big influence in our world today. Um, them staying separated has, yes, kept their communities the way they want them, but it certainly has not been able to help shape the world. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. We can't, we can't retreat, you know, Genesis 128, you know, God has called us to be fruitful, multiply and, you know, take dominion. And I believe we're just learning, you know, to how to, how to work with, you know, dominion and the greatness within us and how to work with government and the banks like it's interesting you know banks were afraid of cryptocurrency and then somehow i got you know like in you know labeled as a crypto expert or all this stuff and you know the banks flew me out to uh this conference in dallas um you know put me in a nice hotel flew me out there had me speak to the banks all like all the big banks texas capital chase like all these big banks sponsored it and it was speaking to all these banking and treasury people about Bitcoin and crypto and why, you know, why communities are gathering towards crypto and like, and cause they're like, look, we're going to have to integrate in crypto or something because the people like it, you know, and if too many yeah. people like it, then they got to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I just was thinking about, uh, there was another, Oh, Oh, um, Amazon. No, no, no. Apple, Apple opening up savings accounts for people with 4% interest rates when, I think Chase, you know, has an interest rate of like 0.001% or something on their, on oh, their, wow. you know, interest on their, on their savings accounts. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just absolutely bizarre. The whole banking system. Yes, it is. It, at, at best, it's going to change and hopefully change for the better. But when you've got big giants like Apple stepping into the arena, Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow. I mean, probably Amazon would follow. And whether this is good or bad, I think it's yet to be seen. But whatever's happening, the banking systems are absolutely changing and they're having to adapt. And um, whether whether it is a, a very rough time or a smooth transition is, is yet to be seen. So mm-hmm. and, and, you know, the Bitcoin and everything obviously has been playing a part of that. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, do you have any ideas on, on what's coming in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, definitely. You're going to see a lot more crypto. Yeah. In five to 10 years, you're going to see a lot more crypto. Um, you know, I'm bullish on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, they're the two, two big, you know, big brothers, main staple, you know, um, the top 100 cryptocurrencies. You can go to coinmarketcap.com and just track the top 100 and just look at the market cap, look at how much throughput you know, people are buying daily and kind of look at the, you know, all the price, you know, over the past years, I would say the top 100, you know, be a little more careful just because there's a lot, it's just so new and it's, there's, it's so volatile. You can lose a lot of money and make money in the, in the top 100, but the top two Bitcoin, Ethereum, next five to 10 years, you're going to see Ethereum. I mean, has thousands of basically, it's like a whole blockchain that there's like thousands of developers working on it, creating their own systems and solutions. That's why I really like Ethereum. And it's, what's interesting is you meet some of these people who are super wealthy in crypto. And the reason I kind of like the people in crypto and stuff is like, you know, in business, it's all about like material success and making money and making millions and getting the Lamborghini and the big house and stuff. But the crypto millionaires, they like, they like just, they like rent everything. They just live out of crypto. And they, now there's like cards where you can like, let me show you. So I have this. Um, it's like this. I have this is one of my crypto cards. Um, it's like a metallic card. And we have, um, you know, my Bitcoin Ethereum. I could just I, I could ca- sell some and put it like a thousand dollars in Bitcoin on this card and use it for anything, you know, hotels, whatever. It's just like a regular card, basically. So it's becoming a lot more integrated to where, yeah. you know, and this is crypto.com, which in L.A. They, you know, they have their brand in you know, L.A. at the arena. But so you are going to see a more integration and you're going to see more, um, you know, just basically, you know, integration, but also just crypto solutions and blockchain solutions. When you really study the blockchain, you know, really study Bitcoin, go watch a documentary on Bitcoin, watch, you know, a free documentary on Facebook on uh, or not on Facebook on YouTube around blockchain. 
and you know ask god god show me what this blockchain technology is and i promise you you're going to be like blown away when you understand the blockchain and the power of it mm-hmm. it's going to change and revolutionize everything and definitely in the next five ten years you're going to see a lot of that wow and so wow. there's going to be a lot of opportunity in it as well for learning like there's a lot of free mm-hmm. courses and free classes on learning technology with blockchain so there's a lot of really good jobs going to come in blockchain you know so i would i would highly recommend if you want to learn a new skill learn web3 learn blockchain learn a some of the ai stuff okay so what i'd like to ask if you're if you're willing we're going to do uh the deeper dive and i'm wondering if you would be able to in the next 15 20 minutes when we go into the deeper dive uh can you share some really practical uh, avenues, maybe some specific things to look at and watch? Maybe you have some courses, um, whatever yeah. the case may be, so that anybody who's interested, they can get on the deeper dive and and uh, and, and get some good, solid information that they can run with. Um, that's something you can do. Yeah, we'll do that 100 okay. percent. Yeah. OK, so just everybody who's watching uh, again, KingdomTalksMedia.com. That's where you need to go. And uh, look for this show with Eric, and and um, you'll want to go all the way through to the the outro that I'm going to play in just a moment. And right after the outro, you'll be able to see the deeper dive and um, uh, asking Eric to share some really practical things that could help people get started and if they want to move in that direction. So, Eric, thank you so much for for being on. I honor you and bless you for what you're doing and your peace and part in the kingdom. I'm, I'm excited about it. I, you got my juices going here now. And I'm like, OK, you know, because my, my years in business haven't gone away. I'm definitely, you know, still entrepreneurial. It's just been focused more on the, the ministry side. And, and so uh, I'm looking forward to this talk with the behind the scenes. I'm excited. Yeah. Thank you for what you do, Gil, and for the kingdom and bless everyone in Kingdom Talks on YouTube and Facebook. Yeah. All right. And so, uh, everyone, if you do go over there, uh, Kingdom Talks Media is uh, membership based. There's a lot of free stuff there. But if you do want to uh, see the behind the scenes and some other things we do ask for ten dollar um, subscription that gets you everything on the website. And there's a lot of really good behind the scenes and deeper dive information as well as um, the Sunday programs and so forth. So uh, look forward to seeing you over there and blessings and we'll see you all shortly. Thank you for taking time out to listen to Kingdom Talks. You can find out more about Kingdom Talks Media and our mission to unite in faith and grow as mature sons at KingdomTalksMedia.com. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, Fringe Radio Network, and many more places. Go to our website to find links to all of our media outlets, as well as fantastic online courses and conferences, including the life-changing interactive course, Ultimate Impact. And last but not least, we ask that you consider partnering with us to fulfill the mission to get these messages to the world. To become a partner, go to the Partnership tab on our website. Thank you, and until next time, live a blessed life Keep carrying us in your heart and sharing us wherever hearts are open.